let's get into it. What I'm going to do today is introduce you to the course overall, to myself. Some of you know me, some of you don't, and this is being recorded, so there's going to be people who are going to see this who don't know me. So I'm going to have a bit of an overview of the course, uh, what exactly we do in terms of uh, in terms of content, scheduling, pricing, uh, the website, and the website's undergoing some changes. So I'm going to explain what it's going to do and what it's doing currently now. And in the end, we're going to talk about uh, the museum tours, uh, etc. So let's get started and get right into it. Um, just as an overview, uh, what, what my course is, who I am, my background, my education, just all available on my website. Um, my name is Nachliel, I'm known as the Museum Guy, and I am a specialist in uh, museum education, specifically Jewish education, but in general, museum education. Uh, give me a museum, I'll find a way to make it interesting and engaging. And my main focus is uh, history, archaeology, uh, Jewish history, and that's what I've been doing for the past, uh, well, 2015 was the first tour that I've done, so nine years. But in the last seven years, I turned this into my main business and on the side i'm doing some uh some formal education and this and that and about three years ago well two years ago actually i started the homeschooling project and this being the third year i've sort of opened up around passover on pesach time i've opened up a uh, english speaking course so i've tried virtual tours for anglos in the past it didn't really catch so well so i stuck with the hebrew but now i'm trying to bring that back and we have a growing community so it's a very good thing so uh so a little bit about the tours. Um, so these are examples of tours that I've done in the museum. Uh, so this is my flagship tour, which I call the Age of Empires. I've done it in New York, I've done it in Boston, I now do it in Jerusalem, and I do it now as a virtual tour. So what we do in these classes, which are called virtual tours or classes, is basically explore different aspects in Jewish history or, or in general. It can be Jewish holidays, it can be also other things as well, through virtual travel. So we actually go to museums and also to sites, which is something you can't do on site. If you're on site, you are where you are. But if you're on Google Earth and you have other footage you can put together and media and so on, well, it can be quite an experience. And I have a bunch of free samples online and I'll show you where you can find them. So that's kind of what we do in this, in this course. Uh, we do different topics throughout the year. I try to stick to at least some semblance of progress where we start with, let's say, uh, the early revolutions in the ancient Near East, like the urban revolution, um, the writing revolution, um, invention of mathematics, and all kinds of other things that I sort of go progressively. And I, of course, do that with Jewish history as well. But I also have lots of classes that have more to do with the time of year. So like Passover, we'll deal with ancient Egypt or with the spring or with agriculture. If we're in the time of Sukkot, then we deal with that as well. Uh, we deal with the fall and the calendar and so on. Uh, and then I have, in, I have lots of other fun topics that don't really have to do with anything in particular in terms of the progress, but they're, they're still interesting. So for example, uh, one of the upcoming classes is called The Mystery of the Lulav in, Sic in Sicily. And I'll tell that story, but basically, uh, you know, somebody reached out to me on the internet and said, I found this carving that looks like a lulav on the walls of an 11th century church in Sicily. So it was clearly once part of an older building. Could this be something Jewish? So it's interesting, and it's a very interesting way to talk about a lot of other things, like the Jewish community in Italy uh, in medieval times. And so there's a lot of fun things to do. It might be a dead end, but it's going to be a fun journey. Um, so we do a lot of like fun stuff in between. Uh, tonight, if you're in the West Coast, uh, I'm doing a, a class that's called uh, the, the Coolest Libraries Around the World, Past and Present, and I'm doing that for the Orange Community County Scholars Program. I'll send information about that. It's through them, but it's going to be fun. I'm doing it in, uh, what's it, I think like 10 a.m. or 11 a.m.? I don't remember exactly. Whatever. I'm thinking like uh, West Coast. Let's get into it. Let's continue. Okay. So let's talk about the classes. So all the schedules on the website, I'll show you the website in really just a few moments, but in terms of the pricing, um, my website is in Israel. So everything is listed in shekels. So I'm giving you the equivalent. A single class is about, is 48 shekels. So that's about 14 bucks, 13 bucks. You know, it fluctuates, but it's listed in shekels for now. I hope to have in my new site that's hopefully going to launch after the holidays, uh, I'll have the ability to display things in dollars and in shekels and more advanced options like Apple Pay, Google Pay. I hope that that will be set up. I'm working on that behind the scenes. Um, the new thing that we're doing this year is memberships, and I want to explain how membership works, and I'll show you where it is on the site. 
But the basic idea is the more classes you 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 purchase, then uh, the less a class costs. So, for example, if a single class is 48 shekels, then four classes is 45 each. Ten classes is 40 each. Uh, and the semester, I'm still working on the pricing because it's not just the pricing. It's also other perks and access to other things. Um, this also includes access to recordings. So if you paid for a class, you should have the recording of that class available once I upload it. Um, and I'm working on the, in the back end of how to set that up, which is separate from the current video library. But the membership should also apply to that. So if you want to just watch recordings or make a mix of attending classes or recordings, you'll have the option to see the upcoming schedule, select the classes you want to join. And that's what's what's good about the memberships is that uh, you have access to a, a schedule and you just pick what you want when you want, as opposed to um, signing up and inputting your details every single time, which includes also uh, both for the registration and for the credit card. So I'm trying to save you all that headache. Uh, those of you who have been doing it know it's a headache. There's no ability to sort of add to cart and do a bunch of events because it's an event. It's not a product. So that's something that I'm sort of uh, working on. And I'm going to have more information about that soon. I just want you to see where it shows up. Okay, so, um, so let's talk about this thing called the uh, members area. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you the website. Okay. Uh, so the current website, which is museumtours.co.il, I might change that soon to the museumguy.co.il, but in any event, uh, this is the homepage. Uh, now, the homepage works perfectly fine, both in Hebrew and in English. I'm just giving you an example. I'm going to switch it to Hebrew. And it also works perfectly fine on mobile, except, you know, things sort of move around a little bit, which is, which is normal because, you know, it's spaced differently. So here it is in Hebrew. It's it's the exact same thing, okay? Um, so uh, that being said, let's see where everything is, okay? So on the home page, you're going to see that there's of course a menu, and I encourage you to take a look at what's in the menu. It's not just homeschool, but on the menu on the top, if you're using your mobile phone, I'm assuming you know the international sign for menu, which is just three lines. So you click on that on the top, and it just opens up this menu. Um, so I have home about that's if you want to know more about me my background my education uh, where i've studied my degrees family whatever um, museum tours so that's more relevant to people doing my standard museum tours that's not for home school as well as self-guided but if you are a member you do have an uh, have access to the same museum tours with a discount so there's a discount for homeschoolers so that's one of the perks but that's going to show up in a in the members area uh, virtual tours so under virtual tours, I also have videos, and I'm going to show you what that is. And then there's homeschool, which also has some of those videos and reviews, blog, and some other stuff. So let's go to homeschool. I'm just showing you if you scroll down, you can get there another way. If you scroll down, some pictures and fun stuff if you want to go through them, but that's just for fun. Um, it shows you here my three main products, uh, my services, which is museum tours, virtual tours, and then homeschool, which is a combination of both. Uh, and each one sends you to you know more information about it. Uh, below here, I have a calendar which has everything. And if you want to narrow that down to just see events that are relevant to either homeschool, virtual tours that aren't homeschool, or museum tours, you click on this and it'll take you to that page. So that's another way to do it. So here it just shows you everything. Now it's pretty intuitive, but if you look at the banner, this banner is in Hebrew. The banner is an image. So the language can't change. If the banner is in Hebrew, the tours in Hebrew. Uh, now, in case you missed that, it says it in the title, free intro for homeschoolers, Hebrew, capital, teens. And it also says it in the description. People still miss it and ask me the question. So I'm going to, I'm always going to try to respond, but it's here. So the information is all pretty straightforward. And all the way below here, you also have a contact form if you want to get in touch with me. So you have all that stuff. Let's go to homeschool. So the homeschool page is, of course, going to look different. But right now, what you, as it says, a school year, you know, 2025, site upgrades and updates ahead. Stay tuned. In the meanwhile, you have some basic information about it, uh, some pricing. The pricing here is $15 per class. I'm going to adjust that because the, the shekels were about $15 when I wrote this. Um, and then you have Google Calendar, Get in Touch, WhatsApp Group. So these are all things the Google Calendar tells you when the upcoming events are. Uh, it, there's going to be another way to see that in the site. But in the meanwhile, just so you know, you have the option. 
And the WhatsApp group opens up a window and you join the WhatsApp group. I usually ask you for to identify yourself because we get spammers and I've got stories of spammers. So I have to be careful with who joins the WhatsApp group, okay? Here's the class schedule. Uh, right now it's displaying both Hebrew and English. I'm working on changing that so you'll only see the English when you're looking at the English page and only see Hebrew when you're looking at it in Hebrew. Right now you just see all of them. So you know, common sense, if it says parent orientation in English, it's English. If you can't read it or if it's Hebrew, it's Hebrew. Okay, so here's all the upcoming events. So we're currently here. Um, no tickets to buy. This is free. I can change that to register, but there's a lot of stuff I'm working on. Okay, so this is it. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the videos and the, the where the memberships are. Uh, so the videos, if you want to watch uh, previous classes at your convenience, so I created this video library here, which has the option to view the Hebrew or the English. So it's displaying the Hebrew first, so I can click English, and it'll just pop down here. There's a lot of them, and you can load more. There's dozens and dozens of classes. Some of these are free. Some of them are rental. The default rental is three days. I'm afraid I don't have any control over that. That's the only option. Um, I'm trying to work on the option for members, which enables you to, you know, you watch it for a longer time. So you could just watch 10 and not be restricted to watching them in three days unless you really want to binge. Uh, I would be mortified of having to hear myself talk for that long. So I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, but in any event, you have pretty much every homeschool class I've ever done in English here, plus a lot more, tons of free stuff, uh, YouTube and more that, that's available. So you can go through this. You can also play around with the categories and just look for, you know, here's all the ones relevant to Jewish history or whatever. You could play around with that, and I'm improving that every day. Um, so that's that's as far as the videos. And uh, the similar thing, if you go to virtual tours and you go to videos, you simply have all of my videos, not just homeschool. So there's tons of stuff. There's an entire menu of my different videos. There's dozens of free videos here, like uh, Tanakh Study, which is a whole series I did for uh, TanakhStudy.com in Brooklyn, like an intro in every one of the Tanakh books from history archaeology. There's like everything here. Uh, and there's other things too. You know, I was these were where I was like a guest on different podcasts or shows and whatever. I just tried to make it easy to find everything, um, lectures and whatnot. Now let's talk about the membership area. So uh, the membership area currently is active only in the sense that you can sign up to be a member. Of course, I have to approve it, but that's just about it. There's nothing much to do with it yet. If you wanna do it, that's fine, but it doesn't really make a difference at this point. Here it is on the top, okay? You'll see this also on mobile. So on the top here, uh, right now I'm logged in, so I'd have to log out, and then it's just gonna say log in guest or whatever. You create an account and that's it. What's important about the account is that once you're in it and the bookings and subscriptions are going to be available, you'll be able to keep track of all that stuff here and you'll see things that regular visitors will not be able to see. So once you have a, once you've you've created a profile, you can purchase a subscription and then you can access whatever it is, uh, video library, uh, different perks and you know books and calendar and all that stuff, you'll be able to actually, you know, sign in to whatever uh, event is happening um, without having to register individually for them. If you don't do that, then again, it's individual uh, events. So this is what is going to hopefully be after the holidays. In the meanwhile, we're sticking to the way it was until now, which is as follows. On the homeschool page, you scroll down or you follow the link that says, you know, click here for a class schedule. And here it is. And you just find what it is the dates are usually listed here tuesday september 10. you can go into the details buy tickets it should be register or more information it gives you more information it tells you exactly when it is um i don't know how many of you know what gmt is i have no idea what gmt is either but that's what israel is uh, the time is listed in israeli time i don't have a way to adjust it so we'll, you'll see it in whatever it is at your time google calendar is good for that and hopefully the members area is going to adjust that i'm working on it in any event uh this is usually there's going to be the title a little bit about the event uh time and location and then there's like standard text with different links and information uh whatever and here's where you just there's no uh, reason for more than one ticket because it's a virtual tour and then you just check out right so that's basically the standard okay 
So that's as far as virtual tours. So just to summarize, currently, virtual tours are going to show up in the main calendar on the homepage amongst everything else or on the homeschool page with uh, just the class schedule here. Uh, right now, the only thing in English is parent orientation. I'm about to add the other classes. Um, we'll talk about that, and then we'll talk about museum tours, okay? So about the, uh, the actual schedule. So uh, a lot of you answered a very extensive and annoying survey. I admit it's really annoying, and it's probably more annoying to go through all the answers and try to piece it together. But the basic idea is I'm trying to find out what are the best times for at least one slot for East Coast and Israel and one slot for West Coast or, you know, Virginia and, you know, other places. Uh, I've, I've got some people in all kinds of places around the world, so there's only so much I can do. Um, so, so far, it seems like the best times are like Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon, evening in Israel, which means mornings for, for East Coast. So either Sunday or Thursday, and I might play around with it. And the other option is to stick with what we've been doing, which is also Monday, but just to do it a little bit later. So it's going to be like 8, 9 p.m. Israel time, but for the West Coast, that's like, you know, 10, 11 a.m. Um, so that's what I can do with right now. I can't commit to doing like a 3 a.m. in Israel unless we have a nice amount of people and we're going to build it up. Um, right now, uh, I would like to offer like I'm doing in Hebrew, different times for different age groups, ages six to nine, and then 10 to like teenagers. Um, it's going to take time to, it's going to be trial and error to figure that out because we're a small group and we're getting started. But we're going to do that, and I'm going to post this tentative schedule really ASAP. I do apologize for the time it took. There's just a lot going on here. But it's going to be hopefully, you know, over the next day or two, I'll have at least some days up. Like tomorrow might actually happen, but I might do another orientation tomorrow. All right. Uh, now let's talk about um, the museum tours. Uh, I'm done. Oh, the video library. I just discussed discuss the video library. So let's talk about museum tours. I didn't have a chance to translate every museum name, but this is for people in Israel. So if this is not relevant to you, you know, you can tag along and listen. That's totally fine. You don't have to stay. I'm going to upload this as soon as I can. It's very basic editing. I'm going to upload it and post it in the group. So the idea is this. Once a month, at least, we have a tour of a different museum in Israel. These tours are divided by age groups more or less. So I'm gonna have one for younger kids, like let's say ages six, seven, eight, nine, give or take, you know? And then for older kids, like 10 to like 15, uh, something like that. And the tours are gonna be primarily in Hebrew. I'm assuming if you're English speakers here in Israel, you want your kids to learn Hebrew. I'm very flexible. I could throw in English and mix it up as we go. I've done it many times. I'm very comfortable with that. So, you know, that's our best option. We usually don't have enough hours of the day to do two tours in Hebrew and then one in English or two. It's just, it's it's a little bit logistically difficult, but we'll see what the demographics are. Like if all Anglos show up and there's one Hebrew speaker, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, so that's basically the idea. These are the museums that I'm planning on doing in Israel. Uh, I only have the museum. I haven't set the dates. I haven't set uh, anything else, but at least we have a date for uh, for Israel, for the Israel Museum, which is next week on Friday, uh, Friday, September the 20th, there's going to be two consecutive tours, and I'll post more about that uh, soon, and um, and there's going to be more after the holidays. So here's the museums, the Israel Museum and the Bible Lines Museum in Jerusalem. Uh, so I'm starting with the Israel Museum because it has a lot to do with the holidays. The Bible Lines Museum, I don't know when I'm going to do it. There's so many things you can do. There's, it's good for Hanukkah. It's good for Pesach. Uh, the Eretz Israel Museum in Tel Aviv, known as Musa, it's an incredible museum that's built on top of a Philistine city, and uh, it, it's it's actually built with um, with uh, guiding in mind. It's like different booths, and like they have like a room for coins and a room for glass and a room for metal, and it's a great site. So uh, so that's going to be one of those times. Um, it's mostly indoors, so the hot weather of Tel Aviv shouldn't be much of, a, of an issue, even though there's a little bit of outdoors. So that's Eretz Israel, The Philistine Museum in Ashdod. This is a really fun gem of a museum, because who goes to Ashdod for museums, right? So Ashdod is one of the five Philistine cities, and in the, 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 these Philistine cities, there's the Museum of the Philistines, and it's a lot of fun. There's some multimedia stuff to do. There's some costumes to wear. You can dress up as a Philistine and fight it out with 
plastic weapons, but it's kind of fun. Um, and there's other things to do as well. And you learn about the Philistines. You get to knock down the pillars of the Philistine t- temple like Shimshon, like Samson, on this v- in this screen. It's a lot of fun. So uh, that will be something we're going to do. Now, in in the in the north, there's a bunch of museums. So east and west, different parts of the north. So let's start with, um, uh, you know, let's start with Caesarea area. So there's the glass museum. It's called the Mizgaga, which is basically like the Museum of Glass and Archaeology. It's in Kibbutz Nachsholim, which is like, which is right next to Caesarea. And um, they also have the site of Dol, which is an ancient port city. So it can be a combination of museum and outdoors. So it's going to be, of course, at the appropriate weather. Um, the museum itself, you can spend an hour there. I wouldn't spend more than an hour there. So like, you're going to come all, going to schlep all the way there. Let's also go to the, to the archaeological site. The next place, which is right next door, is Caesarea. So Caesarea has a new visitor center, and there's also the actual site. It's a beautiful site. There's the hippodrome, like the horse races. Uh, there's a lot of other things to see. So the idea is to, to sort of do a, uh, a tour of, of Caesarea with the visitor center. And we'll see how that will work out, because if it's a large enough group, you know, we'll have to split it, and then it's also a matter of timing. Detailed logistics later. There's a, an archaeological... Uh, museum in what's called Emeka Ma'ayanot. If you're familiar in Israel, there's the Kangaroo Park. It's called Ganguru. It's an amazing park. Like they have authentic Australian animals and plants, and it's it's they have koala bears, and you know you're out there at a petting zoo with kangaroos. So it's right next door. So you can of course you know plan your day around that. And there's also the water parks, what's called the Ena Shlosha, the Sachne. It's that area. It's like it's in the Bika. It's in the Jordan Valley. So that's a great museum with archaeology of Israel in the time. A new visitor center that just opened up. I haven't been there myself, so I can't vouch for it. That's why I put a question mark, is the Mosaic Museum in Lod. Now, Lod has the most beautiful mosaics that have been found in Israel, and they've been traveling around the world while they were uh, gathering the funds to build a visitor center, which just opened. I haven't been. They have activities, mosaics. I have to see what there is there, so I'm going to research that. I don't take you to a place before going there myself and seeing how it works. So I'll keep you posted on that. And the last two museums are in Haifa. So the Hecht Museum, I'm sure you've heard the headlines about a three and a half year old kid who knocked down a 3,500 year old vase. That was all over the news. That was in the Hecht Museum, which is in the University of Haifa. And uh, there's of course the uh, the marine, the maritime, I'm not really, I'm not translating this right. Uh, the Haifa, the, the Maritime Museum of Haifa, the National Maritime Museum. So Haifa is in, the, is in the port city, and there's a lot of marine archaeology. Like the Haifa University, they're the ones who do marine archaeology. So, uh, so that's there, and it's a lot of fun. So this is the overview of the 10 museums, one museum per month that we're going to do on average. There may be some surprises, and of course, if, if I'm traveling, then those museums in the States are going to open up as well. So if I'm in LA, you know, we'll do the Getty. Uh, if I'm in New York, we'll do the Brooklyn Museum, the, the Brooklyn Museum, the Met, the Natural Museum, History Museum. It depends where I go if I go. So I'll keep you posted. Um, so two things about it. Uh, first of all, if you are coming on any of those tours, it's up to you to plan your day. I meet you at the museum and when and when I'm done at the museum, I'm done. So it's up to you. You can arrange a family, uh, family groups, neighborhood. It's that's up to you how you're doing it. I would, of course, be happy to make recommendations. Here's a place to stop for lunch. Here's a this. Here's a, here's a that. But I meet you in the museum, and that's it. So that has to be um, understood. And I made sure you understood that in the form if you answered it. The pricing is approximately 35 to 45 shekels a person. Uh, that's a lot less in dollars, of course, plus the admission. And each museum is slightly different. So some museums uh, are have like I have a deal with them because I know them. They're like like the Israel Museum, the Bible Lines Museum, and I have a deal with them as a guide, and I can get you in for a a discount on the admission. Some museums have free admission on certain days of the week, but if you're coming as a self guided tour with somebody else as a as a as a third party tour, you still have to pay. Um, but it's an admission. It's an it's um. It's a discounted admission. Again, it depends what the museum is. I let you know. Uh, the other thing is uh, the best days for tours, according to the survey that you've answered, is usually Friday and then you know Wednesday or Tuesday. Uh, those are the top hits. And the only uh, other factor is I have to be I have to be uh, you know 
work within the framework of when museums are open. So sometimes I don't have a choice. Like the Bible Lines Museum is open on Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. That's a great time. Uh, I'll, by the way, I'll address this, the, the questions in the chat in a moment. I'm just finishing this. Um, and then it depends. But give or take, I'm going to try to stick with the dates, with the times that you mentioned. And this will be coming up. I'm going to be posting it in the calendar and letting you know about it. Right now, it's just I just haven't had a chance to do that. Uh, so I'm going to be posting Friday next week, and there's going to be another time, which is either Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm working on it. Okay. Uh, am I missing anything? I think that's it. I think that's it. Uh, so let me go through questions, and I'll, I'll answer. And, of course, you can open your mics and ask. But first of all, let me see. Ariella, making West Coast classes on Thursday instead of Monday. I'm totally fine with Thursday. Um, I probably will, will do Thursday. Um, it's better for me. I just occasionally have a Thursday evening gig. Uh, but I think that sticking to 8 o'clock Israel time, which is, I believe, 10 a.m. Uh, West Coast, is fine. So I'll probably do that on Thursdays. And we can alternate every once in a while. We'll see. 